Hello learners, welcome to the NIO studio. I am Shamila. Today we will be learning about fabric science. Just look around and pinpoint all the fabrics in your room. You will find that you are not only wearing fabrics but also sitting on it. A piece of fabric is hanging on a wall as wall hanging or as a curtain on the door. Most of the things in our surroundings are made up of fabrics. Fabric is a piece of cloth. Clothes are as important as food in shelter. You use them for covering yourself, protecting yourself and decorating yourself. We all have different clothes for different occasions like formal wear, party wear, casual wear. So we can say that fabrics are very important and they are present everywhere. A study of all the aspects of fabric is called fabric science. It explains the behavior of fabric under different conditions, its properties, properties like moisture absorption, its tenacity, its resiliency, its heat conduction and their end uses. Just like in summers we wear cotton fabric and while in winter we often use wool fabric. Fabric is used everywhere, for example, in making clothes, furniture, curtains, bags, shoes, etc. There are various kinds of fabrics available in market like cotton fabric in various forms like poplin, cambric, silk is available in market, wool, you have shiny fabrics like brocades, etc. which are used for different purposes. Each fabric is not only different in their appearance but also in their properties. A fabric is made up of yarns and yarns are made up of fiber. So we can say that the basic block is the fiber. After fiber, we make the yarn and by using yarn, we make the fabrics. In this, vi in this video, we will be discussing about the fibers in detail. Rest videos would be discussing about yarns and fabric. Fiber is a thread made up of small hair-like strand twisted together. This hair-like strand is called a fiber. Fiber is a basic unit of any uh, fabric we can say. Next is the classification of fibers. Fibers broadly classified under two categories. One on the basis of their length and the other one is on the basis of origin. Fibers comes as short fiber. Matlab, usually natural fibers come as a short fibers and long fibers are made through chemical treatments or we can say man-made fibers are usually filament in nature. So here we are going to understand two terminologies. One is staple fiber and the other one is filament fiber. All the natural fibers come under the category of staple fibers. Staple fibers are short fibers and all man-made fibers in which we have a synthetic and regenerated fibers, they come under the category of filament fibers. Filament fibers are usually long fibers. The example of natural fibers are your vegetable fibers like cotton, flax, jute, etc. And the man-made fibers are like your polyester, nylon, acrylic. You can cut filament fibers into small chunks and make into staple fibers. Only silk, which we get from the cocoon of silkworm, is the only filament fiber which is natural in nature, which naturally occur as a filament fiber. As we have told, okay, filament fibers are the long fibers. Silk is the only fiber which is, uh, which is a long strand of fiber appear naturally. Fibers obtained from different sources like some fibers are obtained from plant or vegetable sources, others are obtained from animal sources. There are mineral fibers are also available in market. Fibers obtained from natural sources such as plants are often known as cellulosic fibers and the fibers which are obtained from animal sources are also called as protein fibers and we have uh, mineral fibers which are usually come from the rock mining or uh, rock pieces etc. We have asbestos as an example of uh, natural uh, mineral fiber. 
the other class of fiber created by human beings by using different types of chemicals they come under the category of man made fibers so here we have a detailed classification of fiber according to natural and man made fibers natural fibers are further divided into three category one is plant or vegetable fiber the other one is your animal fiber and the last one is your mineral fiber so example of a plant or vegetable fiber is like your cotton jute flax while for the protein fiber or animal fiber we have uh, silk from the silk worm and we have wool from the sheep or goat and the third one we have is the mineral fiber in which we have the asbestos after completing the natural uh, uh, fiber classification we have the man made fiber classification in which we have two broad categories like regenerated fibers and uh, synthetic fibers regenerated fibers we have uh, rayon as an example uh, which is also called as artificial silk and the other one is called as synthetic fiber which we, in which we have uh, polyester uh, nylon acrylic which is purely made up of chemicals so let's start with a little natural fibers so natural fibers may we have these three plant fibers animal fibers and mineral fibers fibers that are obtained from different part of the plants are called vegetable fibers for example we get jute and flax from the stem of the plant while we get cotton from the seed hair so these are the two examples of uh, vegetable fibers after that we have protein fibers these are obtained from the animal source uh, one is your wool fiber which is obtained from the hair of sheep or goat uh, we also have uh, angora rabbit which also give us a wool fiber which is very expensive and not easily available in market other one we have is silk which is obtained from the cocoon of silkworm it's like sericulture we do uh, uh, we rear silkworms and they produce strands of fibers after degumming and after the processes we get a yarn from the cocoon and we make them into the fabric so these two are the protein fibers other one is your mineral fiber which is which are obtained from the natural minerals example is asbestos which is from the rock mining usually um, more of like man made and natural fibers are used in the market like for summer wear we oftenly use cellulosic fiber because cottons and linens are more breathable fabrics they cool it easily um, they they dry up fast while uh, wool fibers are uh, you know they conserve heat and they make the person feel warm so wool and silk are usually used for the winter season next we have the man made fibers the fibers which are made in laboratories by using different chemicals are known as man made fibers we have two categories of man made fibers or we can say two types of man made fibers one is called as regenerated fibers the other one is called as synthetic fibers the word regenerated means ke we have certain cellulosic part or certain natural part and other is the chemical composition or a chemical added to it we mix both the things together then we through spinning process through spinnerets we pass through it and make yarns out of it so regenerated fibers are a combination of a natural component and a chemical component we have rayon as an example of a regenerated fiber or we can say regenerated cellulosic fiber and is used by uh, it is made by using wood pulp or cotton linters uh, and uh, rayon has same properties like uh, uh, cotton and rayon is also called as uh, artificial silk because it has uh, shine luster and it can be made by using uh, waste cotton linters cotton linters are just the basic shredding of cotton which is left after the processing of cotton fibers next we come to the synthetic fibers these are obtained from chemical substances and are generally synthetic in nature 
uh, these are made by using different chemical composition. We have different co uh, chemicals in uh, lab by different spinning methods. We extrude them through spinnerets and all and we make synthetic fibers. Example of synthetic fibers are like uh, nylon, polyester, acrylic. Next we come to the properties of fiber. Each fiber is different from another fiber in performance. Just like uh, for summer we have cotton and for winter we have wool. By knowing the properties of these fiber will help in deciding their end uses. Properties like uh, their moisture absorption, their heat conduction, their strength, their resiliency, how they behave uh, when we touch them and while in water what their properties are. There are certain fiber which get weaker when they are wet and in certain fibers you can't abrade them, you can't do any hard uh, washing for them. So all this we can get to know by knowing their basic properties and uh, the properties are like these. So the first fabric we have, uh, the first fiber we have is the cotton fiber. Uh, their appearance is like it's a dull fiber which get easily dirty. Cotton fiber is usually occur in, in a form of staple fiber. Staple fibers as we know is a small, uh, is a small uh, fibers uh, which occur naturally in environment in form of a cotton pod. The strength of cotton fiber is uh, good as uh, it's stronger when it is wet. Uh, it's stronger when it is wet and can be rubbed hard while washing and and you, you know you iron them in very high temperature also so they withstand the warm conditions the high temperatures and the water condition the next one is your heat conduction properties so the cotton fibers are the good conductor of uh, heat uh, they conduct uh, the heat away from the body and keep it cool so it's a good fiber for your summer wear so you wear cotton kurtis in summer right the next is your uh, resiliency resiliency is the resistance of fabric to wrinkling and creasing that means ke, uh, you get the wrinkle while you wear the cotton fabric so how much time it takes to come back to its original shape after creases occur so we can say that the resiliency is low uh, in cotton fabric it wrinkles easily it creases easily the absorbency of cotton fabric or cotton fiber is very high it absorbs moisture easily uh, and dries up quickly most of the dyes present in the industries are you know cotton fabric have the affinity because it's more uh, it has a good moisture absorption property. The end uses of cotton fabric is first we all know that it, it used as a summer wear uh, or a summer dressing material. It can be used as a wiping cloth, wiping cloth, you can make napkins, you can make uh, towels, uh, you have your uh, table, uh, table mats uh, made up of cotton fabric and uh, cotton is usually used for uh, children wear also matlab baby garments are also made up of cotton fiber because it's absorb moisture it is soft and our undergarments and all are also made through cotton fiber next we have uh, protein fiber in which we are talking about silk silk is the only filament fiber which is available naturally in the environment and silk is called as a queen of fiber because it's shiny it's lustrous it's smooth it has good strength so a lot of properties are present in the silk fiber have you heard your mom calling okay she is having one silk sari which is very expensive she she doesn't wash at home she goes for the dry cleaning and extra purposes so we can say the appearance of the silk fabric is a smooth shiny and the strength is also stronger though it appears delicate but it has but it is known as a strong fiber compared to other fibers like uh, your cotton and linen etc. It is a poor conductor of heat making it a warm fabric. We usually wear it in, uh, in which season? In winter season. Resiliency is low, it wrinkles easily, it creases easily, the absorbency is very high, moisture, it absorbs moisture easily without feeling damp. Uh, the fabrics or the fiber which absorb easily moisture are more comfortable to wear compared to the fabric which are, uh, you know, 
which have poor absorption properties. And the end uses of silk fibers are like high value fabrics are made up of silk used as a uh, sari dress materials or um, men, uh, your men's ties and scarves are usually made up of silk fabric and silk is very expensive and luxurious fabric as we all know that. The next we come to the wool fiber. When we heard the name of wool fiber, we get to know about it. Okay, we get it from the goat or the, or the sheep and uh, we also get wool from the angora rabbit. Wool are known for their warmth. So they are usually wear in the winter season. The appearance is lit, little dull. They have wavy and rough structure. The strength is weak. It becomes more weaker when they are wet can be damaged if it's rubbed hard while washing. The scales got damaged if we rubbed woolen wear. Have you heard the shrinking of woolen wear while washing? It's because of the scales present on the wool. If we put a lot of friction clothes or on wool fabric, so they usually get distorted. The other one is heat conduction. Wool is a bad conductor of heat. It conserves body heat and keeps it warm. So it's a suitable fabric for your winter wear collection. Next is your resiliency. A fiber, it's a flexible fiber, pliable, readily spring back to its original shape. That means if you stretch it, it comes back to its original shape. The absorbance is very high. It is used for making sweaters, your blankets, carpets, gloves, caps, all your winter wears are usually made up of woolen or wool fabrics. Next is, next we are going to talk about the properties of man-made fibers in, in which we have first, we'll be talking about the rayon. Rayon is your uh, regenerated fiber which is made up of uh, cellulosic, a part of cellulosic mixed with chemical. It is also called as artificial silk because of the sheen and smoothness it gives. Um, its strength is weak, it loses its strength when it is wet, uh, it's a good conductor of heat and its resiliency is it wrinkles and creases easily. It absorbs moisture readily and also dries up fast. It uses our in summer dress wear also used as a lining material for your expensive coats and jackets which are available in market. It has shine and luster and rayon is a regenerated fiber so you can extrude them through spinnerets in a long form in a filament form. Next we come to the nylon fiber. Nylon fiber is known as a smooth and shiny fiber. It's strongest among all the fiber. Have you seen parachutes, ropes? Usually your parachute ropes are made up of nylon fiber because it's the strongest fiber among all the synthetic fibers. Its heat conduction is poor as we know and the resiliency is very good recovery from creasing and wrinkling. Uh, nylon is a filament fiber which do not uh, wrinkle easily. It does not absorb moisture so it's, it would be very difficult to dye a nylon fiber. Its uses are used as a hosiery item due to high strength used for making ropes and parachute. Have you heard about nylon stockings, parachutes? Uh, we have tires, we have ropes made up of nylon fiber. Next is your polyester fiber which, is, which has a smooth surface. It's, it is also a strong fiber, a poor conductor of heat. Its resilience is very good. It has good recovery while creasing and wrinkling. That means you don't need to iron a lot, all these uh, man-made fibers. Their absorbance is very low. It absorbs least amount of moisture. It uses are used for dress material, for making ropes, uh, carry bags and home furnishings. So polyester uh, can be used for making uh, your upholstery items like uh, your uh, sofa covers, uh, you have curtains, etc., which can be made through your uh, polyester fiber. And polyester is a man-made synthetic fiber. So the other one is called as acrylic, which is uh, which has properties like a wool fiber. It has smooth surface. Its strength is satisfactory both when dry and wet, dry and wet conditions. Heat conduction is poor, warm to wet. It, when it's warm to wear, that means it is used for your winter wear. 
uh, means acrylic can be used for making sweaters etc also its resiliency is good recovery from creasing and wrinkling absorbency does not absorb moisture easily this make it difficult to dye these fiber its uses are for winter wear very it's a very popular substitute of wool fiber so by this we got to know that okay, we have a three broad classification of fiber which is natural your uh, uh, animal fiber and your mineral fibers and natural okay, you know the examples now cotton jute linen are the examples of your cotton fiber are the example of your cellulosic fiber by the end of this we got to know that okay, our natural fibers are broadly categorized into three categories one is your natural fiber in form of plant or vegetable the other one is for your like animal fiber which is a source of protein fiber or we can say protein fiber we have like wool the third one is your mineral fiber and for man made we have two broad category one is your synthetic fibers the other one is called as regenerated fibers rayon is an example of regenerated fibers and nylon polyester acrylic are an example of synthetic fibers now we come to the identification of the fibers can be identified by the two method one is called as visual examination for visual examination one can identify the fiber by its appearance the appearance is like it's scaly or it's smooth or twist is present this skill can be mastered by experience now we have identification of fiber there are various tests to identify the fiber in the fabric fiber can be identified by visual examination one can identify the fiber by its appearance this skill can be mastered through experience next we have the burning test burning behavior of the fiber help us to identify the fibers for burning test we take a piece of fabric which is 2 by 2 cm and we hold it with a pair of forceps after that we see how the fabrics behave while it's approaching to the flame in the flame and when it is removed from the from the flames so here we start with the cotton fiber the first one is your burning test cotton fibers are also called as cellulosic fibers cotton and rayon are fall under the category of cellulosic fiber when we are approaching towards the flame both does not shrink away it ignites on contact when they are in flame they burn quickly when we remove from the flame they continue burning with an after glow they always smell like a burning paper if you burn a piece of fabric which smell like a burning paper you can easily identify okay, it fall under the category of cellulosic fiber the residue is usually light gray in color with a fluffy ash and for rayon it is like light feathery ash in a very small amount so cellulosic fiber when burn against flame they produce an odor of a burning paper the next we have the protein fiber when silk and wool approach towards a flame when they curl away from the flame that means they have a self extinguishing feature into it they burn slowly uh, they have self extinguishing feature they burn slowly and they always smell like a burning hair the smell which came out came out from the burning of wool fiber is a uh, smell of a burning hair it always form a black bead which is easily crushable so if you burn a piece of fabric which smell like a burning hair then you can easily identify it as a protein fiber and then you can find out it's a silk fiber or a wool fiber by doing other test also other one is your man made fibers the odor is always a smell of smell of a chemical or an acidic odor when we burn the uh, synthetic fiber they fuses they melt and shrink away from the flame when they are in flame they burn slowly and melts all synthetic fibers are usually made up of chemicals when we burn synthetic fibers they they melt and they give an odor of chemicals polyester and nylon are have the quality of self extinguishing while acrylic continues to burn and melt hot molten drops fall while burning the odor is like a little acidic in nature while for nylon and polyester the smell of chemical came out the residue is like a hard tough bead 
which is uh, crushable for the acrylic fiber and for nylon and polyester the bead is very thick you can't crush it with your fingers so after watching this video you would be able to answer what are fabrics the classification fiber according to the length and origin according to length you can categorize them into the staple fibers and filament fibers according to origin you know we have two broad classification like natural fibers and man made man made fibers natural fibers are broadly classified into plant or vegetable fibers or animal fibers and mineral fibers and for synthetic we have regenerated fibers and synthetic fibers fiber under the category of man made fiber properties of different types of fiber like the moisture absorption their heat conduction their strength their resiliency and you are also able to answer how you can identify them by visual examination visual examination are like by the appearance and by you know testing in the flame away from the flame and how how they form a bead afterwards so matlab by burning the fabric you can easily identify them so learners uh, that's all for today hope you learn by watching this video thank you